and welcome to the HBM series where we talk about healthcare, business, and music. My name is Anita. Today, we'll be talking about setting up a medical practice. We understand how tasking this can be for health professionals across the world, and we are here to discuss easy steps. Please stay tuned and enjoy. Best practices in healthcare broadly refers to a process of identifying, collecting, evaluating, interpreting, and implementation of health information and the monitoring of outcomes of healthcare. The first step to setting up a medical practice is creating a budget. In order to be cost effective, doctors have to know what things cost. And so the practice setup manager must do some research and decide if there should be multiple scenarios in the same document or have multiple budgets outlining different scenarios. Healthcare practices must also shop and submit their business plans to at least six to seven banks. That way, you will receive special offers with slightly different terms then you have the option to choose which one best suits your practice. Next, healthcare professionals should secure tax, legal, and practice setup advisors. Now, taxes are a serious issue, so it's important to hire the right tax professional and legal advisors to advise you on setting up the type of entity that is most beneficial to you. Practice setup managers or advisors can also help you finalize your budget, train and hire your staff, set up and plan your marketing, and prevent you from making common startup mistakes. Health practices must obtain an EIN number. An EIN number is a federal tax identification number that is unique to every business. This is assigned by the IRS for business entities operating legally in the United States. Purchasing equipment. Once you have obtained a loan, it is time to start to get a line of credit. You can also obtain a line of credit, start purchasing your equipment, and every good thing that your practice will need. The next and most important phase for health organizations or providers who are setting up their practice is to secure an effective electronic health record system. The electronic health system, also known as the EHR system, are tools of trade for the medical providers. They allow providers to digitize records and streamline communication. Electronic health records serve as a one-stop system for patients' records, histories, and communication with other providers. It also includes lab and prescription orders, as well as information on your revenue cycle. A well-functioning EHR system qualifies for incentive payments. So, of course, the federal government gives medical practices and health professionals medical incentives for you know their electronic health records and so if your electronic health record is not up to par it's not only going to impede care but it's also you're not going to get the incentives that you should so it's worth it to try to get those incentives practice management system practice management systems keep track of all front office and facilities information its primary use is to monitor billing and revenue cycles and so it's important to make sure that the practice management systems is you know it functions properly important information is also shared between the EHR system and the practice management software which eliminates the need of um, to duplicate records in our next slide, we'll be talking about the medical billing service. This is a very difficult or delicate aspect, rather, of setting up a practice, which is why most companies choose 
a third party builder and so if you choose a third party builder please be advised that submitting claims is time consuming and difficult staff must be trained to respond to rejected or denied claims if you choose a third party builder you have to do thorough research and the best billing services of 2019 are number one dr Kron o dr Kron o is best for small practices of about one to 15 providers they charge four to eight percent of net collections next is advanced md it's the best billing service for larger practices of about a hundred providers and they charge four to six percent of net collections the last one I'll be talking about is Care Cloud, which is low cost and offers three levels of service. They charge about three to seven percent of net collections. Now you also have to consider medical transcription software. And so doctors must consider how medical transcriptions fits into their practice. There are three ways a medical practice performs transcription. They can be done in-house with a staff member they can be done via voice recognition software or outsourced to a medical transcription service. And so it must be done accurately and within a reasonable time frame because you want your dictations reprinted or done quickly in a reasonable time frame. we're talking about is credit card processor medical practices make most of your money through payers like insurance companies medicare but they still need a credit card processor for when patients have to pay at the point of care front desk it is best to pick a system that is suitable for the medical practice and so the best credit card processor for 2019-2020 is the tsys merchant solutions and they are said to be the best because they offer credit card processing with no cancellation fees or monthly premiums to medical providers. So that's easy. And so that's something to consider. It's best to choose something that's best suitable for the medical practice. I'll be talking about ancillary services next. So medical practices must consider any ancillary service they might want to offer based on their practice specialty or patient needs. And so, you know, examples of ancillary services that providers may want to offer or may want to add to their service include bone density, ambulatory services, audiology services, cardiology services, hearing, behavioral health services. And so this, let's just say it adds to the practice, but it also incurs expense. So, you know, they have to think about it and know whatever ancillary service fits into their practice. The next thing I'll be talking about is the background check service. Background check is very important to the medical practice as well as any other business. Now, you know, we're not going off of hearsay, what she say, she say. I mean, if you're employing people, you have to check them based off of the facts. Some companies would even lie and say, oh, this person has a record, that person, when they really don't. So it's important. And, and things like this can cause liabilities for practices. So it's important not to assume or go off of he say, she say, and be sure that background checks are done accurately. Of course, it's important the kind of people that you hire make the business. And so some people, you know, prefer to use their family members or whatever employee family members but you know i'll say whatever is good for you whatever is acceptable whatever meets the reasonable standard if those people are educated and they're competent enough to carry out their services then i'll say you know do what's good for your practice but of course i'll say it has to go according to guidelines and procedures that are used to hire the correct people now the best background check services that i know is the first advantage i did know i've heard about first advantage most healthcare companies use first advantage because they're very detailed they're very on point and they're very accurate in their findings. So first advantage, background check service, it, it's a very good service that people use. Still under, you know, hiring and background check and hiring your staff and the hiring process. Um, I'd like to talk about knowledge when it comes to knowledge and experience. And so a lot of people have debate and all types of disagreements when it comes to hiring people who have experience or who have the knowledge 
Now, of course, I'll say that experience, you cannot trade experience for anything. It's good to have experienced individuals. But also, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry to disappoint you that it's possible to have experience for many years and be doing the same thing over and over. And of course, let's not forget that people are different. It depends on the kind of person. Most people just want to do the job for 20 years that they're assigned to do without going beyond the veil to improve themselves. And so, you know, I would say that it's a mix. I mean, a lot of people who have not knowledge are very innovative someone may have huge experience but not be as innovative as somebody who doesn't have long length of experience but is very innovative and has the knowledge so it's up to the company it's up to you know them to gauge it and how they want to um, employ their people obviously the quality of people you employ you know affects your business affects your productivity affects your profits how innovative your staff is will show forth in your company's performance. You cannot take, you cannot separate the two. All right, so that's for that when it comes to hiring people with knowledge and experience. And so I'll be talking about logistics. Now that you know you're close to opening your practice, logistics must be completed. And so before opening your doors, you have to incorporate a legal entity and obtaining a tax ID. Now, this cannot be overemphasized because it's very vital. The main reason why people incorporate or go into incorporation is because of limited liability. And so which means that if there is a lawsuit, all the assets held by that company are subject to risk. And so without incorporating, if you're not in corporation or if you're not, if you're solo, you've opened your personal assets to a threat of lawsuit or whatever the case might be. It's also important to establish policies, procedures, and compliance documentation. And this is very vital to the overall success of any practice. This sets the standards for daily operations, data entry, billing, and interactions with patients. And to establish policies and procedures around this is the core of how the practice is being run. I mean, policies and procedures have to be followed for people to do the right thing the right way. Because, you know, healthcare business is a person-centered business, and it's one that is always quick to being exposed to their abilities so strict adherence have to be followed now that you're close to opening your practice is purchasing insurance every business owner especially those in medical practice understand the importance of purchasing insurance you have to purchase malpractice insurance banks issuing your loan will require you that you take additional coverage and this will vary from bank to bank your practice should be ready to obtain malpractice insurance liability insurance and life insurance any you know all types of insurance that they'll need to be covered pretty much and so congratulations now that you're ready to open your practice, our next video would include considerations to keep in mind such as marketing, construction ideas, changing regulations, advisors, meaningful use standards, and a host of other things. Thank you so much for watching. This video will be a great reminder. I'm confident that it would have been a great reminder for some. And some, you would have learned something. Thank you so much. Thank you for staying and coming by and watching our videos we promise to dish out very important and vital things when it comes to opening practice and everything about healthcare in general tell your friend to tell your friend about the hbm series thanks for stopping by bye for now take care for serious business inquiry about navigating you through the process of opening your medical practice please contact us at aoj241 at yahoo.com thank you bye for now take care